Hey folks, John R. Colley here. I'm a recent graduate of the Yale School of Drama, and today the topic is Shakespeare. Okay, I'll be the first to admit, in high school, I hated Shakespeare. Being a math nerd, the bard was not my jam. So what did I do for my drama school auditions? Over the next few minutes, I'll cover the basics to selecting, preparing, and performing your classical monologues. The first hurdle is finding a piece or two that you connect with. But if you don't like reading Shakespeare and your knowledge of the canon is nil, that could be pretty difficult to find material, right? I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Shakespeare wasn't meant to be read. It was meant to be watched and heard! So what better way is there to familiarize yourself than by watching a live production? How, how now, Malvoli? Oh! <laughs> but what if you don't have access to live theater? Never fear. The Globe Theater, yes, that one, offers an online streaming service. A variety of their full-length productions are available for rent or purchase online. They also host a few free productions on YouTube. That means you can read a brief synopsis of the play, and if a character or plot stands out to you, then watch the full production to find a monologue right for your audition. Choose a title that tickles your fancy and watch, not read, Will's characters come to life. Plus, as an added bonus, you're learning from the best. By watching great actors perform great material, you're already subconsciously beginning to hear Shakespeare's musicality. Which brings me to my next topic. Have you ever read a soliloquy aloud and thought, well, that was pretty, but what the hell did I just say? Or at the very least, I only had a vague understanding of the meaning. This is a problem because an unclear understanding can lead to generalizations in your acting. Specificity is the key to truthful behavior. So how do you get specific with Shakespeare? Paraphrasing is a technique where an actor rewrites Shakespeare in modern, comprehensible language. This is great for two reasons. Not only can you define the unknown, probably out of fashion term, but you can also replace it with a word that's hot or juicy for you, thereby personalizing the text at the same time. In other words, you're specifying what Shakespeare meant while also connecting to the material in an active way. When learning any new language, you have a dictionary to assist you. Shakespeare is no different. The Alexander Schmidt lexicon, in two volumes, contains every single word Shakespeare used. Not only that, but you can also actually look up every instance a word is used in each play. This can be really helpful when a term has multiple meanings. And guess what? It's also available online for free. Another great reference for paraphrasing is the Arden Shakespeare series. Each play contains annotated footnotes and historical references for clarity of understanding. And lastly, there is, of course, Sparknotes. The more well-known works are already paraphrased for you. However, I warn against only using this method because then you're locked into someone else's paraphrase. Also, it may be too academic for the actor. In my opinion, it's better to cobble together your own paraphrase, thereby making your interpretation of the character and their struggle unique to you. So now let's talk about scansion. The majority of Shakespeare is written in verse, and more often than not, drama schools will ask you to prepare a monologue or soliloquy in verse. So, what is verse, and how can scansion help you, the actor? Verse is essentially poetry, and Shakespeare's poetry is written in iambic pentameter. That means in every regular verse line, there are ten syllables, five unstressed and five stressed, with an alternating metrical structure, like this. Ba-bum, 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 ba-bum. This is called scanning the text. But who cares? I'm an actor, not an English major, so why do I need to know this? Well, have you ever heard someone say Shakespeare gives you everything in the text? It's true, and this is what they meant. By knowing what words are stressed and unstressed, you can decipher the importance in each thought. Furthermore, not every verse line is regular. Often these irregularities, like trochees, feminine endings, missing or extra feet, also point to some kind of importance. For example, to be or not to be, that is the question. ba bum ba bum ba bum ba bum ba bum bum if you listen closely, there's an extra unstressed syllable at the end of the line. ba bum bum This is called a feminine ending. Often, they indicate that a character is uncertain or questioning something. In fact, Hamlet's first four lines of this soliloquy are all feminine endings, which makes sense considering his state of being at this point in the play. Regardless whether you interpret that as suicidal or homicidal toward Claudius, 
It's clear Shakespeare has disrupted the regular rhythm of Hamlet's language to indicate some kind of internal debate for him. Ultimately, I'm a proponent of Scansion. By scanning your monologue, you can unearth clues in Shakespeare's writing. He tells you exactly how to act his text in his text. So now that you've chosen a piece and analyzed it, you need to get it on its feet. There are a multitude of exercises and techniques to help the actor fully embody Shakespeare. Unfortunately, there just isn't enough time for us to cover all of them. Plus, each actor is unique. This exercise might work for this actor and not for that one, and vice versa. Therefore, I'll leave you with my final piece of advice. When I auditioned for Yale, I worked with an acting coach for my classical pieces. For me, it was an invaluable part of my preparation. You can only learn so much from books and videos. So, I invite you to check out our website. If you're interested in coaching, you can contact us and we can formulate a plan that works for you. In the end, I may not be Shakespeare's biggest fan, but studying classical text has forever expanded my artistry as an actor for the better. I look at language in a whole new way.